you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. There are going to be a lot of our viewers that know this extraordinary business that's been in northern Nevada in Reno in Midtown for more than two decades and others are going to be very excited to learn about the history here. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the Melting Pot World Emporium, how it's got its start. Uh, Monique and I got together while we were working at a cafe here in town which no longer exists called Du Grenet. A lot of people know that that establishment because it was a very iconic place in its day. It's been closed for about 10 years. But Monique and I got together working there in 1993. Mm -hmm. um, June. June 1993. 19th. 19th at their annual party. <laughs> That's true. And we, we, st we were going to a lot of festivals at that time, music festivals, and we decided that we would start our own vending business. And so we started vending at music festivals. And we did that for two seasons. And then we opened the melting pot in 1996 on Wells Avenue. It was in a small space, 600 square feet. We were there for three years. We continued vending at that during that time. And Monique was still working full time at UPS, and I was waiting part time. Part -time but and I was still waiting there. tables. Mm -hmm. um, we were there for three years, and then we moved it to our second location, which was Virginia and Taylor, right up the street. And we were there for seven years. Uh, and then and in between that, yeah. we went to India. We did. We got to do some traveling. India, Nepal, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. February. Um, yeah, which is just kind of really helped push the store in that direction with the eastern feel that it has. Yeah. A friend of ours who was a, a customer, she invited us to her wedding in India. And that was an amazing opportunity. So we were able to travel in 99 to go to India for about a month. And she chaperoned us all around. We went to all kinds of different regions. And that was such an amazing time for us because we love that culture, very attracted to the East Indian um, art, um, all the deities. That was always our gravitational pull, actually. Um, and so we were there for about a month. Like I said, we went mm -hmm. to her wedding. It was it a little was side trip to Nepal. A side trip, trip to Nepal, mm -hmm. which was incredible. Yeah. The sweetest people on the planet. Um, tiny, super tiny, <laughs> um, and very adorable. And uh, it was a great great opportunity for us. We, we, we bought two giant duffel bags full of things and stuffed them to the brim and brought some of those things back with us. When we returned from our trip to India, the space up the street at Virginia and Taylor was available and we moved our business from Wells to Virginia. We were there for seven years. Um, during that time, we became the ticket outlet for Burning Man, which helped expand our business greatly as Burning Man was growing, so were we. Uh, seven years into it, into that, ten years into it, we moved to this location where we are now. Um, I tried, um, I love the space I saw for rent sign and uh, I immediately called on it and I got, and he said, well, you gotta send in your letter of intention. So I wrote my letter and sent it in and then a week or two later, I'm like, hey, what's up? And he's like, oh, you didn't get it and you didn't want to sign a lease option. So I'm like, Sure I did. What do you mean I didn't want it? So I didn't get it. This Thai furniture place came in. Beautiful giant statuary thing. Never opened. One year. Never opened. I would come by and look and see because I was very attracted to those things. Never opened. One year later. Sign in the window. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember you, the girl from the Melty Pot. I'm like, yeah, I want your space. Okay. And we worked it out. We got in and... Here we are, 10 years later, in this amazing space. Definitely the best smelling part of the whole store. <laughs> it is. There's a lot of incense over here in the spiritual nook. Yeah, especially stuff from India, Nepal, Thailand. Um, we have sage and um, palo santo and all kinds of things that smell really nice. And that makes the whole, whole store smell really nice, of yeah. course. Yeah, it's one of the, the trademark smells of this place. For sure. Very peaceful, very serene in this area. It is, yeah. And this is, you know, it's kind of the, the spiritual center of the store as far as a lot of the Eastern stuff, um, Buddhist and Hindu and a lot of statues and Tibetan prayer flags and singing bowls and bells and tinctures and mala beads and didgeridoos and um, God, just on you and on. A little yeah, of everything here. Prayer cushions and yeah, this it's a really neat part of the store. 
I can't wait to show them the next stop on our journey. Yeah, right next door, the 18 and over smoke shop section. Well, let's take yeah. a look. Okay. Your business model for your smoke shop, completely unique to others. Yeah, you know, I want it to be another part of our business that's accessible to everybody. Um, I want people to be able to come in here and have their questions answered professionally and that we can stand behind what we sell and understand what we're selling and help people get what's going to work best for them, you know, people who are looking for something in a smoke shop. A lot classier than other smoke shops in our community. Tell us a little bit about the diversity of products that you carry here. Well, we carry a, a lot of different hand-blown glass uh, pipes and water pipes and things that are made locally and from a lot of our, our glass blower friends that we do work with in, in Oregon and in Washington and different areas this stuff comes from. We carry a lot of detox to help people with different detoxification deadlines and needs they may have and uh, everything from rolling papers and hemp and rice and flax and uh, undyed paper and clear papers and lots of little accessories and things you might need to to make pieces work or little pull bowls for water pipes or down stems or things like that. Um, we do a lot kratom. Uh, kratom is a is a natural pain reliever from Southeast Asia. Most of it comes from Thailand. People use this very successfully for for pain management and inflammation. It can help with sleep and anxiety. And it's wonderful, actually. These are very interesting. Looks like you oh, sell yeah. soda, but <laughs> right, the can safes. Yeah, those are kind of an old smoke shop classic or standard too. Those have been around as long as I can remember. But yeah, those are secret safes and things that could could disguise your valuables and and go places where people wouldn't expect to find your valuables stashed away. We have shisha, which is for the the kind of the eastern hookahs and tobacco, big tobacco water pipes. A huge selection of vaping supplies, but that's not just for tobacco here. No, exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of handheld vaporizers, um, some tabletops, although they're not as popular these days, um, and, you know, dry flower vaporizers and concentrate vaporizers, um, a lot of uh, accessory batteries that will take screw-on adapters that could take all kinds of different, from dry flower to concentrates to e-juice. Now that everyone's got their groove going on, what do we get to look at next? Let's check out the novelty section. Let's do it. Okay. These are the greatest cards I've ever seen. You have a lot of great gift giving ideas for the holidays, for birthdays, for any occasion. We do, it's so diverse. We have so much fun stuff, the cards and the journals and the antique replica light bulbs and the books and keychains and all the, all the stuff that's kind of remnants from Burning Man because we're so big in a Burning Man that we've got so much cool stuff from that season year round. Great yeah. gift giving place. Absolutely. Who's this lovely lady? Well, this is Naomi. She's been with us for a long time. And at night, when we close the doors, I think all the mannequins, I think they have a party. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm pretty sure. At the malting pot, people can come in and they can get their groove on. Absolutely. They can get their holiday on. Yep. They can get their steampunk on. Absolutely. They can get their Eskimo on. Yeah, their Eskimo. We they, can work that out. They can get their costume on. It's true. Such a great, fun atmosphere. Great clothing line. Yeah, we do. We have lots of amazing, incredible lines of clothing. Very festive, very casual, very uh, across the map, all the different genres that you can imagine, we carry a lot of clothing.
The melting pot is such a perfect name for us because this is a combination of Monique and myself, all of our favorite stuff and stuff from all over the world. On our business card, one of our mantras is love, respect, unity, doorway to the world. That pretty much covers it. That's our whole mission statement. Big changes coming? Yeah, yeah, we're excited. We're putting a new facade on our building. This is a photo of what it's going to look like. It's an ad that we're running right now, but this is what it's actually going to look like. And so it's going to be a big upgrade for us, uh, a really neat addition to Midtown, I think. I'm really excited about it. You're going to be the landmark of Midtown. What are you talking about? I hope so. I hope so. We've been on the street for 17 years. Here you are, Mitch. Some love beads. Can't go out the door without those. Thank you so much for having me here today. It's been such a pleasure. I'm unbelievable. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Mitch. Thank you, really Mitch. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. That was really fun. We're located at 1049 South Virginia Street, one block north of Vassar. Our phone number is 775-322-9445, or you can find us online at meltingpotworldemporium.com. Thanks, Mitch. Was Thanks great for having, having me. Okay. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Today we're visiting one of our local boutiques with Monique and Eric Barron with the Neon Dragonfly eclectic not electric right, eclectic. boutique yeah the name on the on the awning outside is the neon dragonfly eclectic boutique but it does kind of look like electric and people drive by and see all the lamps in the window and that kind of sticks in their brain and we do have lamps we have a lot of lamps very cool eclectic lamps eclectic well, creating new history for our community you're also preserving a piece of history for our future generations here yeah, we, when we did the remodel on the building, we purchased the building about 10 years ago and it was the yoga shack for a couple of years. And then when she moved on, we did the remodel and we transitioned it into a retail space. And at that time, we completely opened up the front of the building because it was just cinder block. And we put in these big picture windows, uh, this exposed duct heating and air conditioning system. We tore down this, this wall that was right here where we're standing, which was separated the, the two different studios. Um, we put this big awning on the front. Um, which the frame was repurposed from another older building here in town, and then we, we, we had a new awning made for it, it. reskinned it. Um, so it, it retains its original charm, it's got creaky floors, and, and it's a really neat space, but then it's got some modern aspects which, which give it more curb appeal and uh, make, it, make it the eclectic boutique that it is. You have taken great pride in preserving some of the history for our community and future generations while bringing a new history to our community as well. In the mid-60s, it, it was a home of a dance teacher. She taught ballet and she added on to her home and this became the Reno Ballet Arts Academy. Um, and it was that for many years. We've actually had customers that have come in and say, I took ballet here and it's pretty neat. It's important that we all feel comfortable in what we wear. There's a couple things that we need. And it's food, clothing, and shelter. It is really important for us to recognize and honor women in all their beauty, shape, size. I will never compromise on quality. We do a lot of fair trade. We try to buy from conscious companies. I've had one of these mugs for, oh, at least 10 years. They're all inlaid and there's just really mm -hmm. a great feel. What are these yeah. bottles about? They're beautiful. These are awesome. Uh, this is a local friend of mine who, who has these etched here in Reno. And uh, it's, it's a water bottle or whatever, but usually people use these for waters. And it's just a positive, the chakra colors, but it puts positive um, energy into your water. Maybe there's a little truth to the electric boutique. Mm, really, Captain Obvious? <laughs> Actually, we do. We have a lot of diverse uh, lighting here. We have some that are vintage, some that are modern, very you know, beautiful and pretty and feminine, and some that are more like you know masculine. So it's a, quite a, a big array of different kinds of lighting. We've used ballet bars all around the store. So these bars here are holding all these lamps and, and these scarves. We have another ballet bar that we're using for that as well. And these ballet bars are really old and there's a lot of energy behind it. And uh, it's kind of cool to repurpose that sort of thing. 
We're going to get to see some beautiful women wearing your beautiful clothes today. Yes, we are. We're going to see some amazing outfits on some beautiful women. Well, let's go. Let's go. I now understand the eclectic in the Neon Dragonfly Eclectic Boutique. You have an eclectic assortment of gifts. This is incredible stuff. We do, we do. We have a lot of interesting, unique uh, lines that we carry. I have never seen a card. A 3D pop-up card, birthday cards, uh, shower cards. There's all kinds of different themes, but they're all basically the same. And they spin. Uh, yes, and they spin. And uh, they're super cute. They're called pirouettes, so that's why they and they spin. Flying wish paper, really fun. Uh, thin sheets of rice paper. You write on the sheet, make your wish, uh, light it, and it just uh, burns up like in thin air. And uh, your wish hopefully will come true. This is a really special line. Santoro, yes, very very interesting um, artwork. It's very different. It's made in London. And along with those uh, pirouette cards, the pop-up cards, uh, which drew me to the line in the first place when I saw that, I was like, oh, these are amazing, cute little uh, round pop-up birthday cards, whatever kind of cards. What are these? These are awesome. These are all cast iron bottle openers. So that's the bison, the bulldog, very funny, the ass. So you can grab say, my ass. grab my ass and open me a beer. And open, and open me a beer, right? <laughs> I love it. Somebody's going to be rushing down to get that one, I guarantee Yeah, you. I love this thing. Very, very cool. And they feel good. They're heavy. They're yeah, not, solid. you know, yeah, they're really nice and solid. Great selection of candles and soaps and just great gifts. Mm hmm Yes. What are these? This is an amazing line made in Truckee, Truckee, California. They name all their candles after different kinds of wines. Sangria, Mimosa, Merlot, Chardonnay, Pinot. Huge seller. Huge seller, uh, really nice. They donate a um, portion of their proceeds to animal, to animal shel shelters and rescue, rescue groups. One of the other things I'm sure is going to bring a lot of women down here, jewelry, jewelry, jewelry. Oh, and more jewelry. Yeah. Should we talk about the jewelry? Should we? Yeah, let's talk about jewelry. So jewelry, yes. I love jewelry. Um, and we do have a nice selection of all kinds of different beautiful, fine, uh, sterling and gemstone jewelry. We have some sort of um, playful kind of um, costumes sort of jewelry, but a lot of like really neat pieces. One of the things I'm present to is like you said before, everything is the highest quality. This is just nicer than you see at other places. And again, for whether it's a gift to yourself or a gift for somebody else, definitely top shopping list place to go. Most definitely, yeah. There's some, some really neat pieces. These these are really interesting. My friend Crystal, Crystalyn, she makes these um, out of actual orchids. So these this picture, like this orchid, corresponds to the piece that she made it, like the actual flower that it used to be. I'm not sure how the process works, but then what is left with is the flower goes away and then the cast of the metal is left where the flower Incredible. was. So it's pretty awesome. I've had such a wonderful time at the Neon Dragonfly Eclectic Boutique for those people who have driven down the street all this time thinking you'd said electric boutique. <laughs> And you can find them at 214 California Avenue, adjacent to the Nevada Museum of Art. 
Find them on the internet at theneondragonfly.com or give them a call at 775-737-9780. Thanks again so much for having me. Yes, likewise, Mitch. That was a really good time. I uh, appreciate you coming down and uh, doing the story. Enjoyed every minute. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. When they first opened their doors in 2009, they started by servicing exotic car dealers. Expanding their business to cover all consumer needs, including commercial fleet vehicles, we're here today at Performance Coatings Auto Body. Let's meet the owner, Mike Shula. Man, hey. Mike, good to see you. How you doing? Very good, thanks for asking. So excited to share your business with our community. Tell us a little bit about where you got your start. Started back in 2009. And uh, as you know, our first customer that we had uh, was a Bentley. And that particular customer, when we first started, really set the tone for every customer that we had after that. Uh, the workmanship that he needed on that car and how precise of a customer he was and how articulate and perfect he wanted everything to be was actually a blessing in disguise for our business. So every car after that got treated the same, regardless if it was a low-end car or a high-end car, and it turned out really good, and so it's been awesome. Wow, Mike, this is a twisted ball of wreckage. <laughs> yes, it is. And uh, this is pretty much where a lot of the cars that come in, this is where we start from. This is a good opportunity to see something on a collision base. When you get insurance work, and we take all kinds of insurance, and what's great is that any customer that comes in has the right and the choice to choose any shop that they want to, any licensed body shop, and it doesn't matter if it's a big shop or a small shop. When you walk up to a car that's been painted, and that outside fender, which was straight because you bought a new fender on it, so it's nice and smooth, <laughs> and it gets paint on there, it may look pretty, but it's right here where it all starts. That's even more important. Yeah, and that's why we have this frame machine. This is a chief second generation, and this is where we start. We disassemble this part of the car. This is where all the framework is. This is where all the support is. This is where I think the most important is before you even get to the looks and the bodywork and the workmanship and the clear coat and all the polishing at the very end, this is the most important part. Well, structural rigidity begins right here. And you know, the thing is, is this is when it's all back together, people don't see this part of the job, do they? No, this is always, because it's always in the back of the shop being torn apart and put together. This car is in a different stage after a collision. So once we've gotten the fenders on, and once we've gotten this hood on, I want to make sure that the seams and everything and the lines are all the way they're supposed to be. And they're evenly throughout most of the car. Let me show you here on this particular part of the car where it's been wrecked. We're using the original metal to come back out. We're actually pulling this, which you have to take it down to the metal. You have these pins that are actually soldered in and you're pulling the metal back out. Then you've got a little bit of Bondo that goes over there. You don't want to use too much as a filler. You just want to be able to smooth out the section that you just worked in. Here's where you see Antonio is actually sanding a small part of the Bondo when he's trying to blend it into the natural curvature of this bumper where you see that you won't know where the work begins and where the existing paint was. So if you look over here on this side of the bumper, you'll see where the little rock chips were filled in with a little bit of putty. And then this is the process that we do before it gets to paint. So here is the next step that after we've done the rock chips and after we've smoothed out the plastic on the front bumper, it then gets supplied with K2 primer. And K2 primer is what adheres to the plastic before you put the paint on. Color matching is an art in its own. Yes, color matching is a very difficult thing to do. However, uh, to get that consistency and to get the quality, you have to start with a quality product. And at Performance Coatings, we use the highest quality that we know of, and that actually helps us with what we do. Um, let me show you some of the things that we've got on our computer system. And that's where we do a lot of our start process here, is that on our computer system, Everything is computerized so that we can customize all of our colors. You want to get a really good formula. So the formula is what we do with this particular system. And for example, we've got Porsche. You put in a Porsche, it has a paint code. And when you put that paint code in, it's going to give you a formula that's actually going to spit out a ticket that you can actually customize with all the different colors that we have. So to give you an example of how difficult sometimes it can be, 
Here is a paint code through Chrysler, and that's a Chrysler White, and you could have even more different variances to this one color. So to try and get it the exact color to the car, you have different years, you may have a different manufacturer, and different manufacturing plants could be painting it just a different variance at that particular plant versus somewhere else. So to help us out, we gather these chips, these are called variant chips, and this is what helps us pick out the color. And the only other way that you can actually get better than this, because what happens is, is sometimes the UV makes the clear coat a little bit unstable. So to try and get the same color and you want to lighten it up or you want to try and get the color just exactly right, you put the, you have a vindicator which you put the VIN code inside the computer which is going to print out a formula, but sometimes you may have to go ahead and tint the color just a little bit just to get it precise. And good painters can get pretty close with good product. What's the first thing somebody should do if they get in an accident? I think the first thing they should do is call their insurance company, report that they have start a claim, that they've been in an accident. Really then, you're the second call and the most important one. I think so. I think the second phone call is important to us because I can provide many different services for them. We do things like pickup, we do drop off, we do pickup for the rental cars, I do towing. I assist them with the insurance company I take care of the, the adjuster when he comes in. So if there's anything that we can do to help, that's what we do. Now, Mike, a lot of people have never stepped foot inside of a paint booth, uh, but this is where the magic happens. And there's prep work to the paint booth before you even roll a car in. Tell us what's going on here. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll blow this whole area out, get rid of the dust from the paint that was in here before. Any contaminants have to be out. Then you have to put down the water. The water will actually just kind of keep everything settled down to the bottom. And it's a cross draft so that the air comes from up above and you have to have proper lighting. Now, Mike, we just saw this getting painted and uh, what, what happens next? We're gonna go ahead and wet sand and polish this. We're gonna put the emblems and what else needs to be put on. We're gonna put it on the truck, make sure it fits, make sure everything is good. And then we'll go ahead and wash it. Uh, put a light wax on it and give it to the customer, we're done. Mike, how can they get a hold of you? They can get a hold of us at 775-829-8181. That's performancecoatingsautobody.com. We're 100 Gentry Way. Cross Street is Moana and South Virginia Street. And we're here five days a week? We're here six days a week, from eight to eight. Wow, that's Mike Schuler, Performance Coatings Autobody. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks again for being here. All right, here. thank you.